Hey, what's up guys? I am The Raw Deal, and today I want to talk about a couple of things concerning the God of War Ascension multiplayer. The first one being what I would now consider to be the most powerful weapon in the entire game, the Hammer of Helios. So let me tell you, when I first acquired this weapon, I really didn't think too much of it. You see, at the time, I was leveling up my Ares class, and because this weapon's main strength lies within its elemental damage output, it would have been foolish for me to use it with a class purely focused on physical strength. So yeah, I gave it a shot, played a couple of matches with it, concluded that it didn't really suit my style of play because it lacked any real combo potential, and I tossed it aside. It wasn't until I began working on my Zeus class that I decided to give the Hammer of Helios a second chance. It may have taken a little while, but once I finally figured out how to properly use this weapon, it quickly became my new favorite toy. Like I mentioned earlier, the key to this weapon's strength lies within its elemental damage output. And to take full advantage of this, you have to understand how to use and apply marks with the weapon's special attacks. So first of all, what are marks? A lot of people seem to think this weapon is useless because the weapon's in-game description tells you that you can apply marks, but it doesn't tell you what they are or how to use them. You can apply a mark to your opponent either one of three ways. A successful hit from one of the weapon's special moves will mark your opponent, as will an elementally charged blow from your hammer. To charge up your hammer, simply hold square until it begins glowing yellow. This charge will last until the next time you attempt a standard light or heavy attack. You'll know your opponent has been marked by the glowing yellow aura they'll have around them. This mark only lasts for a few seconds, but if you can manage to hit your opponent with either one of those three attacks again before the mark expires, you'll temporarily blind your opponent and send them flying for big elemental damage. The temporary blinding is cool, but my favorite thing about this is the launch that comes afterwards. Depending on your position in the map, you'll either launch your opponent off the board for a kill, or you'll launch them towards a wall off which they'll bounce and you'll be able to continue a combo even further. I've come up with some pretty nasty setups for combos off the mark, one of which I've already made a video for. I'll leave the link in the description. Also keep in mind that if there's another player also using the Hammer of Helios and he's marked somebody, if you hit that marked opponent with one of your special attacks, you'll still get the blinding launch. So now that you understand how to use the Hammer of Helios, let me tell you what it is I think makes this weapon so good, maybe even too good depending on your class setup. First of all, you've got that blinding launch, which is basically insta-kill on maps like the Rotunda of Olympus. All I have to do is keep my hammer elementally charged and hit them with a square-square triangle special combo, and it's game over. There are practically no walls on that map, so I can end up with about 10 kills via ring out easily. Even without ring outs, I'm practically still guaranteed a kill because of the combo I can do after they bounce off the wall. If I'm using my Hades build where I'm wearing all three pieces of his war armor, there's no way you're going to survive that combo regardless of how you stacked your defense. The reason why this weapon is so deadly in the hands of a Hades player is because, it, like I said, if you're wearing the battle armor, then you're dealing high elemental and physical damage at the same time. I know a lot of you might already consider the God of the Underworld to be broken as is, but this just might be another OP setup. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't see any real way to counter this. Sure, you can stack your armor with physical and elemental defense, but in doing so, you're going to have to sacrifice your own damage output. I don't know. I haven't come across anybody else who knew what they were doing with this weapon, so I haven't had a chance myself to experiment with defenses against it. We'll see what happens in the future. In the meantime, I'm just going to continue enjoying this weapon for what it is. Hopefully you guys now have a better understanding of how this weapon was meant to be used, so I encourage you all to give it a shot. As of right now, it's one of the most underrated weapons in the game, but it's pretty fun to use. And if anybody has their own tips and tricks for this hammer, I'd love to hear them. Either write them in the comment section below or make a video response. Okay, next I want to talk about this patch that's supposed to be released soon. There's no exact date for it yet, but hopefully it's going to be out by the end of the month. In this patch, there's supposed to be some bug adjustments and balance fixes, and what I wanted to talk about was what I don't think they're going to change. In a previous video, I talked about the combo system and the high damage output, and how I thought this game could use some system for damage scaling. We end up getting some pretty good dialogue going for people both for and against, and there are a lot of things in this game that many would consider to be broken, but as some have pointed out, the game has only been out for a very short period of time. 
still have to give the metagame a chance to develop. The developers of this game knew exactly what they were doing when they introduced these huge combos into the system. For the most part, I think the game is playing as intended. It's not often that I get to face other good players online who also know how to do combos like I can, but when I do, it's pretty damn exciting. It's like the combat intensifies because I know that with one false move, I'm toast. I can't just throw out combo starters with reckless abandon. I've actually got to poke and use safer attacks so that I myself don't get countered in combo to death. Somebody actually pulled off the get hammered combo on me the other day, and I was proud of him. I was like, well damn. So this is how it feels. Dude taunted afterwards. I was like, okay, you earned it. But now I'm coming for you. So the next time I engaged him in combat, I had to fight a little more carefully, a little smarter. You know, like I opened up with like a light, evade, did another light, evaded again. And I guess he thought I was going to do another light. But instead of attacking him right away, I jumped. He tried to parry, and I came down on him with a heavy, and then I launched him and did my combo on him. You've just got to learn how to adapt. If you know somebody's looking for that counter hit or parry setup so they can do that killer combo on you, use that to your advantage. A lot of the moves that lead to those high damage combos leave the user opens a counter attack if anticipated. You see, these are the types of things that make any fighting game interesting. The types of mind games that take place between two very capable players are what it's all about at high level play. It's like playing a game of chess. Always you gotta think several moves ahead. So yeah, I doubt they'll make any changes to the combo and damage system. I actually hope they don't now. To do so could actually have a very negative effect on the metagame. Aside from a couple of exploits and glitches, I really don't think there's too much that they need to change as far as the gameplay is concerned. There is one thing in this upcoming patch that has me both excited and worried at its possible inclusion, and that is stat tracking and leaderboards. I mean, yeah, it would definitely be cool to see why I stack up against competition around the rest of the world, but not if I have to deal with boosters and an increased amount of rage quitting. People rage quit plenty enough already and their stats aren't even being tracked, so what do you think is going to happen when people have to worry about their KD or their win-loss ratio? And unless they implement a system that prevents parties from entering free-for-all game modes, those leaderboards aren't going to mean anything anyway. I mean, think about it. All you would have to do is go into a match of champions with three of your buddies who you know aren't going to fight back and just pad your stats, brutal killing, collecting favor, doing whatever you want. Yeah, the way I see it, leaderboards will be a waste of time and they'd only cause more problems for this community. But yeah, those are just my ideas. Let me know what you guys think. But all in all, I've got to say I'm pretty excited for this new patch. They're raising the level cap from 30 to 40. Also, each class is supposed to receive some new relics and magic and we might even get to see a new god and weapon class introduced. There are rumors that the fifth god is supposed to be Apollo and the new weapon a bow. Some even think the new weapons could be a pair of war gauntlets similar in style to the Nemean Cestus. I don't particularly care either way. Just buff the attack speed on my spears and I'll be happy. But yeah, that's my rant for the day. Make sure you guys try out that Hammer of Helios and let me know what you think of it. I promise you people are going to start complaining about how OP it is pretty soon. And also, let me know if you guys are looking forward to the upcoming patch and what do you hope to see in it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and commentary, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. One minute remaining. A great feast will be held in your honor.